Um, oh, it's there, it's there. It's there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. You're all over. I'm very, I'm very proud. Very proud of you. For sure. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. We're in there. Yeah, no, 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 I can't tell you why. Uh, calm, very calm. Good <laughs> Charlie Right. Three people on. Rav Kook, Susi Lena spoke about this time of the year is Aviv It's not just it's not just that the seasons are changing. From that time of Yitzhak and time, everything in the world changed. Everything in the world changed. Everything that could ever be was different from that time of Yitzhak and time. I want to focus on one particular akuda that really lies at the center of also the chiddush of the Rosh Hashanah I'm not going to talk about the Baal but those who are listening carefully will hear will hear the sound of the Baal and will understand that that's what this is what about is about also. First in Halacha, I want to begin a little bit with the Dvar Halacha because it's very much Nagayat to what we're going to be talking about in Knimias. Everybody here who's learned in Yeshiva knows that that in our learning there are many, many chilukim that we make between a din and a chefza and a din and a gavra. A halacha that's not get to the object, to something the object, as opposed to the person. And this is discussed in many, many, many areas of halacha. In Shas, it's only mentioned really at the beginning of the Sech and the Dar. The difference between a neder, which is a din in the Chepza, and the Shvu, which is a halacha in the Gavr. That's really where it's found in Shas. But as far as in the Torah of that, uh, of, of, of the Achreinim, there's a very, very important hakira regarding the nature of the Isra of Hamas. It's a strange thing that we have food that we eat the entire year, and we enjoy the entire year, it's totally permitted, and then all of a sudden, for a week, it's the horror of horrors, Hamas, 
And even Jews, many Jews who are far removed from the halachas of Kashas, when it comes to this thing called Chamas, they're afraid. So the 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 Ragatrava, the Kozlagavar, there's a heat suck in the uh, Bitzel of Many, many Achorim talk about the nature of this Isra. Is it an Isra that is somehow inherently in the food itself, that something happens that for a week the food becomes imbued with this existential reality that makes it a that it's like a piece of trade. It's a piece of trade. Or even worse. But the object itself is an object of this, sir. Or do we say no? That that for seven days or for that week of Pesach, there's a chalais din on the gavra, on the person. The food is the same food. It's a, it's a, it's a slice of bread, it's a bagel. But the Torah came along and imposed on the person certain dinim on the gavra to stay apart, to stay removed and separated from this. So it's not like tarfus, it's not like chalev or basa b'chalev and so on. It's a din on the person, on the gavra, to stay away. The pashtas, the pashtas we see from the Rogachov and others is that it's halacha in the gavra, not in the chetzer. Because there's a very important klal that's found in the Asma and the Raisa from Rabbi Yosef Engel, in Klal Yud from Rabbi Yosef Engel, where there he explains that there's an important distinction to be made between certain isurim of the Torah that are isurim zmaniim, that are related to time, that relate to the time, as opposed to chalev or basa v'chalev that have nothing to do with time. And, and Rabbi Yosef Engel comes to the conclusion, he brings Kedarko, a thousand rayas, to prove that when it, comes to, when it comes to something that is generally in one state, but then there's a time where it's different, that that cannot be a din in the actual chayfas, in the object itself. It's a din in the person. In other words, there are certain dinam that the Torah imposed upon the person vis-a-vis that object. Not that the object is like a piece of trays. So the Torah says you can't go near this thing for these days. For this time, you can't go near these things. And that's the and the and the verse of Engel brings rice from the Rambam, and from the Ramban, and from and from other Rishonim. And we spoke about this when we were learning some of the Lama, the, the Indian of Lama Tes Malachis. That one of the diukim of Rabbi Yosef Engel is the, that the lashon of the mission is is Hazorea Hachoresh. The whole week long, you're allowed to plant. The whole week long, you're allowed to plow. So the is not in the Zriya, it's not, it's not, it's, un, it's the person, you can't be Zare, you can't plant on Shabbos. You can't plant, uh, you can't plow on Shabbos. You can't uh, put on a light on Shabbos. So it's a din of the person, that's why it's not Hazriya or Hacharish, it's Hazareya, Hacharish. It's not the thing, it's the person. And there are many, many Nafkeminis, there are many nafkeminis in halacha, many, many nafkeminis that are brought down in halacha. Uh, for instance, the Mechaz Chinuch talks about the mitzvah of uh, the mitzvah uh, when it comes to when it comes to uh, removing the chametz. By the by, the removal of the chametz. So the question is, when it comes to this mitzvah of tashbiso, is it is it enough that there be this bittul belayv this Hashbasa believe, in other words, that emotionally, intellectually, we distance ourselves from the chametz, or do we say no? We have to do something to the actual chayfets. The chayfets has to be eliminated, or burned, or the far laruach. We have to do something with the object. So it depends on whether or not chametz is an isa that's in the chayfets itself, or is it a din in the person not eating chametz. Another another nafki minute that's discussed we find in is whether or not chametz is metam temes We know that if God forbid a person eats something that's not kosher, it has an impact, it has an effect upon him. And Ruchni is somehow it affects him. It's metam temes aleiv, metam temes It causes there to be a certain dullness in spirituality. So the question is, does that happen with chametz as well? If we say it's a din in the chefsa, in other words, that for that week of Pesach, that the chefetz is metaphysically somehow affected. Uh, by this din of the Torah, that it becomes like a piece of trade, then it could have a negative impact upon the kid. And that's where we find the number of Achanim talk about 
uh, whether or not, if, let's say you have a baby that's being nursed uh, by uh, somebody who's not Jewish who's eating hummus during Pesach. Right? And the baby's being nursed by this woman who is eating hummus during Pesach. Is that an issue? Or feeding a child that's used to having hummus. Can we have somebody that's not Jewish give the kid some hummus during Pesach? Obviously, we're not dealing with an issue of a gaver, but we're dealing with an issue of a chetzer. So if the, the, the child's a child, it's a baby. So there are many questions that come up uh, uh, also with Gabi Yisra Hana. Do we need a special limut to teach us that Hamad is also uh, There are many questions that come up. There's a, there's a very fascinating story that's brought down uh, from, a fascinating story that's brought, brought down from, from uh, Rabbi Kivag when he was a little boy. It says that uh, his, he, he heard a conversation between his mother and father. Rabbi Kivag's mother asked, asked his father, uh, that the Gemara tells us uh, about uh, about Rabbi Shmuel ben Elisha, that that uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't concerned about uh, there being a gezeira not to sit by the Shabbos candle by himself because he was constant and he said and he he wasn't worried and uh, and he said that ani ekrev le'ata I will be able to sit by the candle I'm I'm am conscious of Shabbos I'm not going to start fixing the candle and the Gemara says that even a, even a god like that, even a great person like that, was, was Nechshel. So Rabbi Kivega heard his mother asking the father, how can it be that it was Nechshel? Darizal said that a person who's careful not to eat a mashu of chametz on Pesach is muftah, that what? He's not going to sin the whole year. He's guaranteed he won't sin the whole year. So he, so she asked her husband, that it's not possible, that it can't be, and it can't be, especially in Yonav Achila, it can't be that what? That, 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 that he ate, that he ate, that, that the Tatana uh, was 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 nuchshul in, in, in eating a mashu of chametz on Pesach? It can't be such a thing. How could it be? Otherwise, how do we explain that he taka, made a mistake and he sinned on his level? He moved the candle on Shabbos. So how could it be? There's haftacha that Rizal says is that you're not going to sin. And he did. <laughs> so the little boy Bikivagi started off. He was a precocious child. Uh, Bikivagi went and he brought a raya from Tais. I'm not going. There's no time to go into that right now. Bikivagi brought a raya from Tais to say no. That's only when what when there's a chefs of shalisa. He says it could be that that what that when it comes to eating a mashu of chametz on Pesach, since it's not a din in the chefs, it's nis on the gavra, right? It's not a din in the in the chefs. So this this thing that Kashbo that then I've talked to the reason is only if a person is what if it, 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 rather that, that that there could come out such a big thing that he was able to sin it's because it could talk be that that he ate a mashu of chametz on Pesach but since uh, a, a mashu of chametz on Pesach doesn't have a din of isur in the chayfus of the chametz itself so then it could still be possible that he would move the candle on Shabbos so it's, it's brought down the story like the friend Bikivay so why am I telling you all of this so let's not go into the pinimis. The Gemara and Shabbos on the Flamin Isle of Ahmed Bey's, everybody is familiar with. The Gemara tells us there that when a person dies, when we leave this world, there are a number of questions that were asked when we come to the Bezna Shalmala at 120. And it seems that the most pressing question is Tzipis Liyishu. In other words, were you a person that longed for salvation? Tzipis Liyishu. <coughs> Now, the simple meaning of the question is, were you somebody that was longing for the arrival of Mashiach? See, peace, Lishu, were you waiting for the ultimate salvation? But when we look more deeply into this, it becomes very clear that it's not just about we want Mashiach now. It's certainly about that, that we, that we want Mashiach. But on a deeper level, the Swarm tells us that it's a question about a person's entire life. Were you a person that, throughout your life, were you a person that was an optimist or a pessimist? How did you live your life? Were you a person that got up in the morning filled with emuna, filled with faith, filled with excitement, filled with anticipation for this coming day? Is that the way that you woke up in the morning, filled with the belief that, that the matzah of an is not going to be going on like this forever, and that the joy of the fear is developed? And that the matzev uh, with that kid that you have is not going to be forever. Are you or I, or do you wake up in the morning, or do you wake up wake up in the morning, uh, with that noise of negativity of pessimism <coughs> that breaks you, uh, that sh- that causes you to be missing the whole simchas chaim of Jew? You know, there's a fascinating thing. One of the questions that we find the Rishonim be asking is, why is it that Dosan and Haviram were zaychet to leave Mitzrayim? 
how come Dustin and Avim didn't die in the days of Chayshech with the rest of the Rishayim, right? <coughs> Dustin and Avim were, were, were not uh, tzaddikim. Why didn't Dustin and Avim die? So we find a fascinating rush where the rush says, Afa Pisha Ha Yerushayim, Lo Nisya Shuman Hagu'ula. Hear this? Even though they were Rishayim, they were optimistic Rishayim. Lo Nisya Shuman Hagu'ula. It was the those that died were people that were Nisyash. Those were people that were that the whole time during the pandemic they were listening to CNN and all the reports. <laughs> <laughs> They're Messiahishim and Agula. Messiahishim and Agula. This is never going to end. You see, there are people that it's never going to end. This is the Olam to add this whole thing. Messiahishim and Agula. Dosen and Aviram, with Alice, with all of their faults. <coughs> Dosen and Aviram, lo nesiyashim. The Rosh says, lo nesiyashim and Agula. In other words, when, we, when it says lo nesiyashim and Agula, it didn't only mean that they were hoping that someday we'll get out of this, someday we'll get out of Mitzrayim. It also meant that someday we're going to, we want to be better. Someday we're going to have Agula. Someday, we, we want to change, we're not able to right now. But the Rosh is telling us that they were, that even with all of their problems, they were Mitzapim li Yeshua. They were Jews that were Mitzapim li Yeshua. Rabbi David Cohn, the Nazir, who's called the Nazir, I'm sure many of you heard of him. One of Rav Kook's greatest told me them. We'll get to a sentence of his at the very end. The Nazir, the Nazir writes that if you want to look at one of the books of Tanakh that's filled with what he calls Ke'ev Ha'olam, the pain of the world, which book would that be? <coughs> it would either be Ea Vakalist, right? The Contenders. So he says, when you look especially at Ko- at Kohelis, he says the the level of pain and of pessimism that Shlomo Melech speaks about <coughs> doesn't end that way. But he describes in Sefer Kohelis, the Nozha says is really encapsulated and summarized in these words of the pasuk, "Ein kol chadash taches hashemesh." There is nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. And the whole Kohel is Dor Holech, Dor Ba. A generation comes, a generation goes. Bizarre Hashemish, Uva Hashemish. You feel the monotony and the misery in these psukim. The sun rises, the sun also sets. So wave, so wave. It goes around and around. Holech, Haruach, Val Svi Voisav, Shavaruach. Everything just is the same thing over and over. Mashahaya, what? Hushiyya, whatever was, is all there's ever going to be. Umashanasa, Hushiyyasa, whatever has taken place, is what's going to take place. Yeish Dovish Yomar Reza Khadash. So sometimes it looks like there's something new, and people say, Oh, Reza Khadash. But the pessimist says, Hukra Hayola Ilaban. So the classic Sefer in Tanakh that is describing the, the world view of the pessimist, of the Messiah, is, is Sefer Kohelis. And that he calls the Ke'ev Ha'olam, the pain of the world. Yesh, the Yeush of what he calls Pessimus Naira, of horrible pessimism. Now, let me go back. I, I don't usually like to quote from non-Jewish sources at all. I'll just mention for a second. If we go back to the Olam HaKadmon, way back in history, to Chachme to, Yavan, to the ancients of, of Greece. There was a Besamedrish there in ancient Greece. There was a school of thought in ancient Greece that believed that the entire world, everything that exists is, is, in this, is static, is stuck, Nothing changes, the past, the present, and the future is all the same. And they are the upholders in the ancient times, in the secular world, of this view of Ein Chodesh Tachas Hashemesh. There is nothing new. And that's a dark, gloomy world of Yehush. On the other hand, there was another Besam Medrash that was dynamic. And that Besam Medrash in ancient Greece saw that all of, all of reality as being in constant flux and constant change. And over the years, those who have had the misfortune, like myself, of studying philosophy, there was a time in my life, a few years where I did, 
over, over all of history, the, the, this machlokas continue. The machlokas that, that, you know, whether you're a Kohelis person or a Shirishirim person, that difference of those two Megillas, <coughs> and those two world views of Kohelis and Shirishirim, persisted and continue to, and persist to this day. In, in the, by the Achroinim of the, of the philosophers of the secular world, the greatest of the pessimists, it seems to me, was, was Descartes. Again, I don't like to mention these people usually, but it's important to have in constant in context of what happened by Tisman Sign, which we'll talk about in a second. So Descartes was a, a Welch pessimist. And on the other hand, uh, the, the Welch optimist, again, I don't know if you're familiar with these names, it was Bergson. Everything by Bergson was new, was his chaches. Every single second uh, was, was in, in that world, of the secular world, everything was shir shirim, everything was chag ha'oviv, chaydish ha'oviv. You could say about the writings of that particular philosopher, ein kol yashan tachaz Hashem. Nothing is old by Bergson. Akol chadash. And, and I enjoyed reading that. It's a pleasure to read. I'm not recommending it to anybody. It was a pleasure. Now let's go to the Haggadah, heaven. Let's go to Pesach. The cave Ha'olam, the pain of the Jewish people, is godless, is exile. That's our misery. Our suffering is called godless. And the beginning of the story of godless that we tell on Lel Hasaydah, the beginning of that story, we tell the story of godless with the words Manishtan. Manishtan, which the peasants will say, would translate, has anything really changed? Manishtan, has anything really changed? It begins with the word ma. What's fascinating is that it ends, by the time we get to the end of the Seder, and the and Nirza, then we're singing already the song of Echad, mi yodaya. Mi yodaya. Who knows what? Echad mi yodaya. So the transition that's taking place <coughs> from Golas to Gula, from Kahelis to Shirashim, which is our minute to end the night with Shirashim, we begin with the, with the misery of Golas, with Manishtana, nothing is different. We begin with the question of Ma, Memhe, what? But we end with a different kind of question. We end with the question of Mi, Echad Mi So we transition from ma to me. Golis, we're going to learn right now. Golis is the sod of mem he, of ma, of what? And geula, salvation, redemption, is the sod of mem yud, of me. Let me explain what I'm talking about. In the Agadamah of the Zarah Kaddish, Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Lozab, the son of Rabbi Shimon Yechai, begins to dash in Marisi Bereshis. Rabbi Lozab Rabbi Shimon is talking about creation. And he's darshaning the Pasuk in Yeshaya Perak Mem. Su'u meroim einechem. Learning about this in Chabuz Yosef HaTzadi. Su'u meroim einechem uru'u mi bora eila. Lift your eyes, lamarum, to the heavens it's probably translated, above. Su'u meroim einechem. Lift your eyes up, uru'u, mi bara eila. And the drusha there is focusing on the fact that mi and eila are the letters elokim. Mi and eila are elokim, right? Mi and emem yud, av lam hei is elokim. Mi bara eila. And Rabbi Lozor Rabbi Shimon asks, la'an asa. What does it mean, where do our eyes, where do we look? What does it mean, la'an asa, to what place do our eyes turn? In other words, it doesn't say su l'shamayim einechem. It says su marom. So he explains that the Navi is telling us to lift our eyes up, not to a place, but like we're learning in, in, on Sunday morning, that we should have himmeldika oigen, to, to look at things from a higher perspective. To look at things from a higher perspective. To look at things in a different way. 
Turn your eyes to the one whose ways are mysterious and hidden. That's what Rebbe Lozor Shimon says. Turn your eyes away from Ma and turn your eyes to Mi. Mi Bara Eila. There's a difference between Ma and Mi. Between what is and who is it. What is it and who is it? What that means is as follows. The ancient Egyptians were the foremost upholders of a philosophy, of a worldview of pessimism. The world Mitzrayim, as you all know, is from what word? Metzarim. 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 A metzer means you're stuck. It means you're closed in, you're stuck. And therefore, the ancient, the ancient Egyptians were living in a static world, cycles, monotonous laws, all kinds of chukim, chayvim, meshabdim. When Chazal say that nobody ever escaped, no evid ever escaped Egypt, it means it was a world where <clears throat> everything was mashahoya, hushiyya. If you were a slave on Tuesday, you were a slave on Wednesday. And you were a slave until you died. And whatever your whatever your status was in society, what you were born into, that's what you that's the way that you died. And all of the laws and the philosophy of the ancient Egyptians was Mashahaya Hushiyi, the embodiment of pessimism. What Rabbi Eloz Rabbi Shimon is talking about at the very beginning of the Zohar Kodesh. Remember that the Zohar Kodesh is coming to reveal the inner reality. Not the external reality of Mashahai Hushiya. Everything is just going on and on and on. And everything is revolving. Sovev, Sovev, Holech, Eruach. Rabbi Shimon Bayuchai is tearing away the covering of Egypt, of Descartes, of. of that horrible, pessimistic, dullest way of looking at reality as being something which is unmoving, static, unchanging. You are who you are. You can never be anything other than the person that you are and so on. The world can never change. It's the opposite of Tzipis Yeshu. Mitzrayim is the source, is the root of Gullus. It's the darkest, deepest feeling of a person who is hopeless. It's the opposite of Tzipis Yeshua. In other words, when, we're, when we die at 120, and in the Bezun Shomali, we ask the question, did you long for salvation? Were you an optimist? It means, it means that the Malachi is going to ask you, Rabbi, were you among those Jews who left Mitzrayim and celebrated Pesach? Did you leave? Did you leave Mitzrayim? Did you leave that <laughs> narrow, constricted world that only cared about Maza, the Chepsa, not the God? Only cared about Mazah. What is this? Not who is this? Rabbi Lozor Rabbi Shimon says that the revolution of Yiddishkeit, the revolution of Yitzhak and Saim, the revolution of creation is turn your eyes, Uru, Sumerom Nechem. Lift up your eyes. Don't just ask the question of what is this table made of? Don't, ask, don't just ask the question of what, what, is, what is the chemical composition of the cereal that I'm having for breakfast. Ask a different question. Lift your eyes up and ask the question, <clears throat> Who created this? Who's the creator of all this? Where does this come from? Who created this? There's the Tfisa, the ancient pessimistic Tfisa that's Egyptian. The styles of that would be in Greece, and then with the later philosophers, that old history. There's one. That's one tefisa. That's one tefisa of creation. The t- there's another tefisa that asks the question of mi bara ela, where there's a bore and there's a nivra. The Egyptian will look at the moon, and will ask the question, Maza, What is this? It's a strange thing. There's this sphere that's, that's, that's farther away than Australia, a lot farther than Australia. And, and this strange sphere 
We want to know, the scientist wants to know, what is this? What is this? In other words, the, the scientists, the scientific mind is filled with the question of maze. And all of science is to answer the question, maze. What is this? And throughout all of history, those who believed that they were upholding all that is rational and scientific, the only question they wanted to answer was the Egyptian question of maze. See, when you look at the moon, when you look at the moon, you, you look at that and, and you ask, how big is it? How does it work? Do they, do they, do they sell uh, trina and hummus <laughs> over there? What is that place? What is that place that's called the moon? That's the interest of, e of Egypt. That's the interest of science. What is it? And when a yid goes outside, hopefully we'll have some we'll have a beautiful, clear moon. And when we go outside, when we look up at the moon, we say, V'lelavona omar shetes we're just as scientific as the rest of the world. We're just as interested in the question of man. But we never ever end with the question of man. We always end with the question of Echad Miodea. Who created the moon? Why did he create the moon? How does the, what is the moon telling us? The moon is telling us that even though you feel sometimes like your light is finished, like you're dead, you have no desire to get up. There's a creator who loves you. <coughs> and who created you? And, who, and why did he create you? <coughs> so that transitioning from Golas, from the Ke'eva Olam, from the pessimism of the word Ma, Manishtan, what has changed? To go to the, to go to that world of Mi Bara Eila, Elohim, to look at things in an entirely different way, to look at things in a completely different way. You know, the Swarms say that by that by Kiddush Levan is fascinating how we turn to each other and we say, Shalom Aleichem. What do you answer, Yeshua, and I say to you, Shalom Aleichem? Aleichem Shalom. But I just saw you the whole Shabbos. A hundred. First hundred since seventh grade. Shalom Aleichem, Aleichem Shalom. So the Swarm talk about this. It's a modern thing. That you're sitting next to this guy the whole shop because he's annoying you. He's, 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 he, he, he argues the whole time. You walk outside, you walk out of shul five feet, you look up at the moon, you say, Shalom Aleichem, you say, Aleichem Shalom. What do you mean? You never saw this guy? You're sitting with him the whole Shabbos. The Teretz is, <clears throat> he's not the same person. That's the world of Yiddish guy. That's the world of getting out of Egypt. That's the world of Ein Kol Yoshan Tachas Hashem, and there's nothing old. Hakol Chadash. That's why Pesach is Chodesh Aviv. Hachodesh is Elochem. And Akash Baruch said to Moshe, Look at the moon. Look at the moon. This is the world. I'm taking you out of Egypt. I'm taking you out of that sad, static world of the Mitzrayim. So a person can walk outside. The weather's starting to get nice. The Mitzvah Shem is going to be a few days. It's going to be beautiful. The flowers are coming up. Everything is coming back to life. A, per a person can walk outside and look at, the, look at the trees and the flowers. And, and he could ask the question, just one question, Maza. And he could walk around with a, with a microscope. He could walk around with his notes or with a computer and to, <coughs> and to Google this flower and this tree. And there are people that they enjoy doing that. But the whole question, the question of uh, is... Maza. And it's totally good. Yes, we also want to know what that is. But a yid walks outside at this time of the year, and, and the flowers are starting to come up, and, it's, and Pesach is already in the air. And that Jew starts to sing. He starts to cry out. That's Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim. I told, I told last week to uh, um, I was in Lakewood last week, and I told him the story. I mentioned it maybe once here over the years also. That there, were, that there were two Talmidim, two Altamiras, two old graduates of the Mir Yeshiva in Poland, that they got together in Chicago. Where Marche Rogov, who was a big Lamdan, he, he was a in Chicago after the war. He died many years ago. And an old Chavrusev, his name was Rabbi Elchanan Yosef Hertzman. These are big people. A tremendous Lamdan. And uh, Rav Hertzberg went to visit him, uh, his friend Rav Rogov in Chicago. And and they were both uh, close in age. And, and Rav Herzl was very, very nispal that he saw that his chavusa 
who was actually, I think, a year or two older than him, was like, like yeshiva boy. He was Amish, like, learning late into the night, getting up early, and, and every, everything that he did was with such excitement. This is Jesus. Son of Herzberg himself was like, you know, he was in his 80s, and he's trying to schlop it. He could barely, could barely get around. So he asked this friend, he says, how do you, how do you do that? Like, what's the story of it? So Rav Rogov said to him, some of you remember this story? Well, Rav Rogov said to him, what do you mean, how, how do I, why am I excited? Because he says, like, like, a, like a bochim. He said, we were together by the same shmuz, by Rabbi Yucham. So he said, what shmuz? You know, it was like, in, 19, in 1910, what shmuz, what shmuz Rabbi Yucham? He said, you remember, we had the, we had a chabur with Rabbi Yucham that we were zarekhed to be in his house. There was a certain special uh, vad that took place in Rabbi Yucham's house. And there were, obviously, there was, they were like uh, the elite, and they had this special shmuz in the mashgiach in the house. <coughs> and it was not like Rabbi Yucham to ever be even a minute late. And we were in his house, and we were waiting around the table, and Rabbi Yucham was like, and Rav Rogev said, you remember it was a beautiful, beautiful spring day. It was right Pesach time. It was a beautiful spring day. And and we saw that Rabbi Yucham, we saw him coming into the house and he was like, I'm shy. And he walked in and he started to call out to us. He started to call us, he said, call me from the gas. I, I, I just came from the street. And then I saw... It's Alice Vax. Was it Alice Vax? Everything's growing. Everything is growing. And then I began to hear, and Yucham is, and I began to hear the trees screaming out to me, Yerucham, Alice Vax, everything is growing. For Vaz Vax, the end. Why aren't you growing? And he couldn't come to himself, Rav Yucham. And now, and now, uh, said, yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. So Mordechai Rogov said, I'm living with that every minute of my life. I can't get that out of my head. That 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 day in Rabbi Yucham's house. Alles wachst. Everything is growing. For was wachst in me. How come you stop growing? What happened to you? The the change that took place when Rav Kook spoke about Yitzhak Mitzrayim being the Aviv Ha'olam, the spring of the world. The physical composition and nature of of the universe didn't change, as far as we can see, it didn't change. What took place was that the world of Mitzrayim is a person who takes an apple in his hand and he asks, Maza, what is the apple? <laughs> Ever since he says this time, it became possible for a person to hold an apple in his hand and to say, Miza. You know? Miza. Who is this? Mi bara Eva. And when a person makes that transition from Mashu, from a Chefza, to Mishu, a Gavra, that's called Gula. That's called redemption. Ultimately, it's going to be with Mashiach ben David. Mashiach should be very soon. Mashu to Mishu. Now, this began with the first one of us who actually was dragging around in the world and the rest of the world was stuck before, before uh, Mitzrayim. Well, Mitzrayim already existed. But the world was stuck in in one place, and our elders, our elders, Eli Avram Avinu, began to ask, "What me, Balhabira?" He began to ask the question of me. Who's the Who's the Adon Olam? He was the one that began that revolution that culminated with Yitzhak Mitzrayim and will ultimately culminate with with Mashiach Ben David. From that time of me Baal Habir, that Avram Avinu was walking around this world and he was asking the question, me Baal Habir, we began with that project, with that enterprise, undertaking, 
of looking at HaKadosh Baruch Hu and looking at ourselves not like a chevza, not as an object, but rather as a gav, as a person. Each person, each single one of us, not kahelis, shir, shir. When I said at the very beginning that I'm going to talk to you about the Balshav Tov HaKadosh, and the Ma'apeich of the Balshav Tov HaKadosh, I'm not going to go into this now. This is a riches, a riches, which I talk about all the time on different, on different occasions. But the world before the Balshav HaKadosh, the world after the Balshav HaKadosh, it's the same it's that same emphasis. The difference between the one who is focused on maza, on the on the chetzer, as opposed to the to the one who is constantly every second of his life asking miza, mi bara el. It's a different daven. It's a different world. The world of the Bashama Kodesh is the, it's the explanation of that Hagdama to the Zara Kodesh of Rebloz that Rebloz Reb Shem asked that that the whole tachas of our lives is sumer aminech mira mi bara ela to ask the question me. Therefore, the Svarim make a very, very big point about the gematria of, of, of Adam. al of Dalad and the Mem. al of Dalad Mem. The gematria of, 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 of Adam is 45. 45 is Mem Hay, is Ma. That's the gematria of Adam, is Mem Hay. And the vast majority of people in the world over history have fallen into that diminished view of what is man? Not who is man. What is man? And therefore the objectification of slaves. How is it possible that a human being should be taken as a slave? What does that mean? The objectification of women, of how, uh, uh, of all of these, of all of these mistakes where where people began somehow to look at other people as being chefses, not as gavras. They began to look at people as things, not as humans. That's Mitzrayim. That's, that's Mitzrayim. To look at a person as a thing, and not as somebody who's constantly changing alive, not as somebody who has a shlichus, not as somebody who's me. See, Mem Yud, we, we've spoken about many times over the years, which we come to Sphere Solomon, the Shuas, Mem Yud is 50. 50 is the soda of what? Yoga. In other words, man's job in this world is to elevate himself from being Adam, which is Mem Hay, which is 45, and to make himself into an Adam, which is Mem Yud. Mem Yud is 50. 50 is Chayus. 50 is Man Chayus Hainu. 50 means Yovel. 50 means being free. 50 means Echad Mi Yodeya. The question of me, if you're asking that question, if you live as, a, as, a, as, an, as an optimist with hope and with faith and Sipisa the Yeshua, then every second of your life you're asking the question of me, Bara, Ela. And if you believe who is the creator, that there's a creator, and that I'm a human being, I'm not a thing, I'm not a pyramid, I'm not a sphinx, I'm a person, I'm a yid. I have inside of me a chelikol coming mouth, which means that every second of my life is a different world, like the like the Alter talks about Shaykh and Amuna. Every single second, the Alter Rebbe explains all this from talking about that every single, not second, every single milli, 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 milli second, it's a whole new world. A whole new world wasn't invented by Disney. Is that from Disney? I don't know, <laughs> something like that. It wasn't invented by Disney. A whole new world means mamish. The mitzvah is every single second is changing. That's what it means. Tshuva was created before the world. Tshuva means tshuva means you're not you're never stuck. Just because you were just because you were one thing five minutes ago, the next five minutes in the world of there being a creator and you're being a me and not a ma, you're not stuck at all. Everything is everything is changing. Every second is changing. The whole world of Paro, Paro was making fun of us. And Paro, and Paro said, Mi Hashem Asher Eshma Bakolo. You hear what he's doing? He's mocking the whole concept of me. Mi Hashem. Their gods were gods of Ma. Ma is something you could buy in the you could buy in Amazing Savings. It's a thing. Ma, I shouldn't say it. Amazing Savings are the Jewish people. I didn't mean it in bed. <laughs> you could buy this in the five and ten. Ma is a thing. Egypt was. So therefore, Paro says, me, Hashem. He didn't go for this whole idea of me. Because me means the end of slavery. Me means the end of, me means that you're done. You're finished. Paro's done. There's no more Paro. Like, like, like Ramadan was talking about last night, the side of Ra, 
the Yitzhar, it's a cool Kirshen Tichlov, it doesn't exist. Because the truth of Messias is that from one second to the next, it's It's not the same thing. But that puts power, all the powers of, of the world are put out of business by that. There's no such thing. And therefore, you understand that power was not making fun of me, Hashem, Hashem, and Kailai. Because, because he lived in a closed universe. He lived in a finite world. And there are many people that still live that way. In a closed, finite, miserable, dark, pessimistic world. And much of that has had a huge impact upon modern Western civilization. I don't have time now to go into the drop of that, but it's had a huge impact upon modern civilization. And what's happening now in America, and what's happening also in Israel, and really all over the world is very much connected to this machlaikis between the two worldviews of Kahalas and Shir Hashim. It goes back to the same thing. One of the greatest optimists that lived in this last period of time was Rav Kook, Tzchusi <clears throat> Rav Kook has a whole section on the Urza Kredus in the second Chaylet. There's a whole section that's called His Alus Ha'ayla. You know that Rav Kook was a tremendous supporter of the theory of evolution, not Darwin's theory of the origin of the species. That's filled with fear, not because. But Rav Kook, Rav Kook saw it in that shift from the Middle Ages to that Ra'ayon, that concept of the world evolving, of the world improving, of the world moving, of the world changing, he saw like he saw in everything else in the world. He saw in that the tremendous Nitzot, a spark of a great Kedusha. He saw, he saw in that a tremendous step forward towards, a step forward towards the coming of Mashiach. Just an example of a sentence, there are thousands of sentences, but there's a whole section in Chalik Beis, Ki eich evshel it's the rough quote. <laughs> How is it possible for a person to despair? How could a person give up? How could a person give up? Whether it means with your marriage, whether it means with a kid, whether it means with children, whether, whether, whether it means with Parnosa, whether it means with your Ruchnius. How could a person give up? Rav Cook says, that's exactly when you see that everything is is evolving, everything is changing. That's what Rav Rogov heard from Rabbi Yochum. That Rabbi Yochum heard every flower screaming out to him, Yochum, box, grow, change. You left Mitzrayim. You're you're miyotze Mitzrayim. Even Dostan Avim lo nesiyah shulman agula. They didn't give up. How many of us are living the same way, with the same habits and the same shtusim, the same narish guy? You're 12 years old, 14 years old, 15 years old, with the same silliness and the same, and the same stuck in the same place like a child. And you can be 40, 50 years old, the same, the same temper and the same shtusim and the same laziness and the same, oh, the same, the same, the same. Soiv, soiv, hoylech. Like Kahalas describes at the beginning. Masho, how you, who she, yeah. You could ask somebody, you're, you're 60 years old. You still you still can't get up for davening? Or you're 60 years old, or you're 50 years old. You still you still kiss the guy's wife by kiddush or something? You know, it's against halacha. You know, you might be chayv karis for that. He said, this looks like I'm doing my whole life. It's my shahayu, she. That's who I was. That's who I am. That's who I will always be. And you can put on my mitzvah. Masha hayisi, hayisi. The kach. <laughs> I was who I was when I was 14, 15. I was done. I was cooked. And that's how I died. Yeah, people, they say the same jokes. <laughs> the same jokes for 67 years. You know, they, yeah, I always make fun of this. You know, you have, the, you have the certain number of people more careful than they should do, but I, I, in the country, I got some people upset because I was making fun of it. But you have, you have, you have people that are 40, 50 years old and they announce somebody has a simcha and they still call out kiddush, kiddush. Or you have... <laughs> or, or somebody, or they announced that somebody, uh, uh, whatever, did something, and then you have these guys that go, psh, psh, psh. <laughs> and then they look out to see how everybody is looking at them. And, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so original. Wow, nobody, 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 <laughs> <laughs>
You're 50 years old, Baruch Shalom. Stop it. <laughs> like, you, you did this in the stream when you were, when you were 12. Kiddish. Move on to something else. Talk about something else. And then and they always look around like, oh, you heard that? I made that sound. That's something. How do I think of that? But isn't it true? You go to one place after the other, and you say, I have these people, and they go, and they, it's the same look on their faces. And the same comments. They, they call somebody to give them a lead, and they start like, shh, 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 shh. So, these are, these, are, these are harmless things. I'm not making fun because they but they're harmless. But there are things that are not harmless. There are habits that are not harmless. There are habits that are not harmless. And a person is stuck in that place. And he's living a life that's the opposite of, of Yitzhiya's Nishayim. That's the opposite of Pesach. There's a, um, there's a poem that, I, that I've mentioned over the years. Also, I'm, I, I apologize, it's from somebody that's not Jewish. But it's, it's one that, that I come back to very often in my thoughts. And I'd like to share with you again, even though I've done this in the past, so forgive me. But... It's, I think it's very. I think it's very beautiful. It's what we're. It's what we're talking about. It's by. Uh, it's by Walt Whitman. He's one of my, one of my favorites from the old days. Walt Whitman, and it's called "When I Heard the Learned Astronomer." You familiar with this? When I heard the learned astronomer, listen to this. It's a little bit hard to hear. You're not reading inside. It's just a few sentences. It's about a guy that's that's sitting in the lecture hall, listening to an astro- a lecture on astronomy. I've read it a few times over the years. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures were arranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I, sitting, heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick, till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself in the mystical, moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. That's one of the most beautiful things I've, things I've ever seen written. In other words, he was taking an astronomy class. And the professor was lecturing in astronomy. And he was going over the facts and the figures. In other words, ma. I said, well, that's fine. We have to know those things. And he was, he was going over the facts and the figures. But the student says, how so unaccountable for reasons that I couldn't understand. I became tired and sick. I became tired and sick. That's what's going on in the world. That's what was, the world was like until the Baal came. Tired and sick. <clears throat> Smart, learned, even pious. But tired. Tired. <coughs> it's the Tzaddikim saying, the Rabbi Yashab, when all the Tzaddikim spoke about how the world was in a state of, of faintness. Iluf, being faint and sick and tired. A mitzvah, but a mitzvah that's not alive. A davening. A davening where you'll have thousands of classes. What is the meaning of davening? Not to whom are you davening? You hear the difference? The difference between ma and me. There are going to be thousands of shirim going on all over the Jewish world over the next week and a half, two weeks. Thousands. I would wager, I'm sorry to say, that the vast majority of them are going to be focused on ma. Not on me, who is he? Not in that connection. To me. Me bar him. Ma and me, of course, spell mommy. Right? <laughs> that's, that's the need of a mother. That's the need of a mother. But that that difference, the Balsham HaKadosh came, and the way that the way that Rav Kook writes about this in the, in the Urza Kadosh, also in Chelegi Beis, Mimokam She'ein Kal Kadosh, he wasn't speaking specifically about the Balsham, he was talking about what he, what he called the Tchir, the revival, the return to life in Eretz Yisrael. That's what Kuk's whole, his whole avoider was, bringing the Jewish people back to life in Eretz Yisrael. <coughs> we must move, Rav Kuk wrote, from a place where nothing is new to a place where nothing is old. Shakol mischadesh. That everything, everything is mischadesh. Everything is new. Shesimchas shamayim v'aretz hovabo to a to a life where that is filled with the simcha of shamayim and aretz. He's alluding to the month of Nisan, because the 
the tziv of the name Yudke Vavke of the month of Nisan is the Pasuk, what? Yisum Tor Shemayim is Sogei Ha'aretz, which is Yudke Vavke, the Aishis of Hashem's name, which is Midbar Ha'ela, the time of Nisan. Yisum Chor Shemayim, which is the time of creation. Nisan. Yisum Chor Shemayim, the Sogei Ha'aretz, he says, Ki Yom, Ki Yom Shenevro, Ki Yom Shenevro. So, however, when I began talking about whether or not Chomis is a din in the Chetzel, whether or not Chomis is a din in the Gavra. And it seems that the consensus hold that Chomis is a passing problem that we have in our lives. It passes. It's not inherent in creation. There is a problem with Chomis in creation. But since we, since the conclusion of Rabbi Yosef Engel, Rabbi Yosef and the vast majority of Achreinim is that Chomis is not is not Chefz of Shaliz. Chomis is Nisus <clears throat> It's a passing problem that man has that we've been struggling with from the beginning of time. But it's not how we were created. It's not how we were wired. Man, even though Adam is the Gematria 45 and his Ma, the Tachlis of our lives ever since that day that we left Mitzrayim, the Tachlis is to be able to take a walk like Rabbi Ruchan on a spring day. And they're going to be coming up now at Hashem, lots of beautiful days. And to be able to take a walk the way that the way that this person is not Jewish was able to describe Lahavim. To be able to take a walk and to feel I'm I'm a person that when it comes to 120 and they're going to ask me Shemaim, my entire Yid, Yehudi Yakai, Tagid at Ahmed, Sipito Yeshua, are you optimistic? Not just about the stock market. You're optimistic, not just about politics. You're optimistic about yourself. You're optimistic about your kids. You're optimistic about how it's never too late to change. If you were, that means that you were among the Yodzei Mitzrayim. It means that you are the ones that, you are one of those who left Mitzrayim back then, and you're going to come back to life. <coughs> because you're a person that you never allowed yourself to die while you were in the world, so you're going to come back to life. And that's why we have a Kabbalah. This is the time of the year, Tchis Amazing. So we daven, they should be Kimei Tseis Chimei Tseisrayim, Aaron and the Flows. That we should be among those who are Yaitse Mitzrayim. That we should be Jews who are filled with that light of Shir Shirim, of the, of the Gavim. And, and if sometimes, sometimes we taste the bitterness of the Mar, and we taste the bitterness of Kohelis, but we remember the end of Kohelis. Sov Dov HaKal Nishma. At the end of Kohelis, otherwise it wouldn't be in Tanakh. It's all that man is. It's to be able to, it's to be able to leave Mitzrayim and to continue along to finish this Golas and to finish the Gula of Mitzrayim where the Gula is going to take place when the Shiat Sakan should be Mary Amen. 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 Amen.